You may have I.O. intensive VMs hosted on a node which overloads the CPU and memory on the controller VM. If the I.O. keeps on increasing, soon you'll have to migrate that VM to other nodes. Now, with volume group load balancing, I.O. intensive VMs can utilize the sources of other controller VMs, thus avoiding migrating user VMs to other nodes. Welcome to another episode of Tech Topics. My name is Ativ, and I'm a system reliability engineer based out of San Jose office. Today, I'm going to talk about how volume group load balancing works, which is available from AOS 5.6 release onwards. First, let's understand how VDisk are distributed without load balancing enabled. QMU is a free source emulator which stands for Quick Emulator and performs hardware virtualization. Frodo here is a Nutanix host user SCSI PCI controller implementation which sits outside of QMU on the host. This team in particularly has the information about what VDisk needs to be exposed to a specific VM. So here, without load balancing, connections to the target will always be to the local's target. With load balancing, the same iSCSI target is accessed through connections to multiple targets. Why? Because the VDisk are now distributed along the cluster. Each volume group has 32 shards irrespective of the number of VDisk. Frodo will create connection to all 32 shards, which will be distributed across the cluster. Shards, which range from 0 to 31, are mapped to n number of VDisk in a round robin fashion. Let's understand how iSCSI login will happen when load balancing is enabled. The user VM will always connect to the local CVM using port number 3260. Now, in case the user VM is I.O. intensive and a hotspot is created, redirection will happen. And now, using iSCSI redirection, this load will be distributed to some other node on port number 3205. Let's jump to configuring volume group load balancing. We can do this by dropping to the ACLI. To do that, I'm going to do a buddy session to one of the CVMs and then drop down to the ACLI. Here, I'm going to create a volume group and attach a few disks to it and also enable load balancing. If I do a tab, it gives you options to what can be done with it. Here, I've created a volume group with load balancing enabled. Now I'm going to attach a few disks to it. So I have a volume group having load balancing enabled on it and three disks attached to it. Now let's attach a user VM to the volume group that we just created. Here I'm going to attach this volume group to the Windows machine. In order to verify if the load balancing was enabled on the volume group, we can go to the Stargate uh, diagnostic page and verify this information. So here I have different tabs open that you can access with the CVM IPs and dropping down to the diagnostic page of Stargate. If I do a refresh, you will see all the VDisk that are hosted on this particular CVM. Here is the CVM, that's the preferred CVM, and the shards which we talked about are distributed. If I go to another one, you'll see the same thing, and so on with the other nodes. Now, in case you want to modify an existing volume group, you must first detach all the VMs that are attached to it. And we can verify this from ACLI.
here you can see that this volume group has this VM attached and the three VDIS that we created. Now if I try to disable load balancing on this volume group, I won't be able to do it because a, a VM is attached to it. You can see on the screen it says, unable to disable load balancing since a VM is attached. In order to do that, first I will have to detach this VM and then disable load balancing. Now if I try the command again, it will let me. So make sure that you always remove the VMs before enabling or disabling load balancing on it. So there you have it. Leave a comment below and let us know what topic you like us to cover next and be sure to subscribe to keep up to date with all the new features. Thanks for watching and see you next time. <laughs>